What is up everybody, this is Always back with the next video of Java JDBC Essential Training Series. So in the last video we'll learn how to create a separate class for a connection and in this video I'm going to show you how to loop through a result set. So let's go to phpMyAdmin in the school database. I have this table of students in which I have four entities. So I have four students in this uh, in this table. So I'm going to show you how to loop through with this data. Let's go back to NetBeans. I will highly recommend to create a separate class, a separate package for a specific work. So if your application gets bigger and bigger, it's very easy to manage. So you need to learn how to design the software or application. So what I'm going to do to access that students table, I'm going to create a new class. So let's just right click on the package and then create a new class. Uh, maybe we can add a new package. So I'm going to add a new package. I'm going to name it table, tables. And let's click on finish. And in that package, I'm going to create a new class now. So in Java class. So we're going to name our class the same as a table name, which is students. And let's click on finish. Now let's get rid of these comments. Alright, so in the class, we need to create a method which will retrieve a data from that table. Type public static void and let's just name our method display or get students. And then here we're going to pass in argument which is going to be result set. So press enter to import that and let's just name it RS and then just let's just come down. Now we need to use a loop to loop through the data from that table. So I'm going to use a while loop for that. So just type while and we're going to select the while loop with the condition. So in the condition, we're going to pass in RS dot the next method, right? So let me read this description. So basically it moves the cursor forward one row from its current position. If there is any data, it will go to the next row. So let's just select that. Now we can use a string buffer class. So let's just type string buffer and I'm just going to name it buffer. Yeah, the buffer is fine. This is equal to new string buffer. Let's go back and look at the table. So in the table we have columns, right? So we have ID column, we have first name column, last name, DOB, class and email. So for each column, we need to loop through it. Let's go back to NetBeans and I'll show you. Okay, we need to import the string buffer as well. And there's an error for exception as well. We just add the SQL escape, uh, exception error. And now here, we're going to append a table to it. So let's just say, we're going to say here, buffer use that object dot append and here we can just uh, type let's say students okay i'm going to say student id space and then we're going to concatenate it with a method on rs rs dot and if we go back to php my admin we see the data type for id is int so we can get the method get int okay and here we're going to just pass in the name of our column, which is ID. Now we got the student ID table and then we're going to buffer append and we can just get the name as well. So to get the name, I'm just going to say student name or maybe just the, after the ID, we can just say name. So RS dot get string. So why am I using get string? Because the first name type is the string type. So here we can say first underscore name and we forgot the semicolon again. Add a semicolon. I'm just gonna verify the name. So the first name, first underscore name, that's fine. That's the table name. Now we are going to add uh, the last name as well. So let's just say buffer dot append and then here we can use rs dot get string again because that's the string data type and then say last underscore name 
And uh, one more thing we should do here, we just add a space here, okay? We can't add a space here, so what we need to do, we need to add the space plus and then concatenate with the space, okay? So if you want to add a space here, so concatenate and add a double quotation and add a parenthesis, okay? Because that's the table name or column name we're accessing, we cannot add space there it's gonna give us an error so we got that and then we need buffer dot append now what we need we need data birth all right so for data birth we can just say r s dot date okay get date and then what was the the column name that's dob so just type dob and that's it for this now for now let's just leave that here and then let's try running it there's an error in the code here which gotta remove this uh, okay so after we get everything done here we need to print out right so what we're gonna do I'm going to use s out for system out and here we can say a buffer dot to string let's just remove this uh, empty space here we don't need that now let's just save this uh, class now let's go to main class and we need to get rid of this rs.last and now we're going to import that package with that class so uh, on the top you can see import jdbc sample.tables.students so we have imported that now let's use that class and here we can type students dot get students and pass in our result set object which is this which let us get uh, from students table alright so simply let's just run the project now and let's see if we get the results alright cool so we got student id I'm just gonna show you to go to the student class and if we can get the result back yeah so here we are getting student ID which is just a string and then we got this RS dot ID that is the ID there and then we got the name we actually forgot to add a space there that's why Von and Michelle is just stick to each other so we need to add the space here and then we got the first name and then space and then last name and then space and then we got a date of birth as well so if we go back to and uh, we see that the student table has the Michelle on number one number two Tom Katie and a waste at number four and we got the DOB as well so that is how you can loop through the data and uh, yeah that's it for this video guys and the uh, next video is going to be about how to move cursor a scrollable cursor uh, in the result set up and down okay so that's what we're going to talk about in the next video thanks for watching and if you have any question let me know in the comments below and you can actually download this code i upload that on github uh, there's a link in the description check it out and uh, yeah that's it for this video guys thanks for watching and i'll talk to you guys in the next video cheese